Uh, let's bring in uh, Ben Shapiro. He's the editor in chief of the Daily Wire, syndicated columnist, host of the Ben Shapiro Show. Joins us from uh, where are you today? Out west, Tennessee, actually. Okay. Oh, well, that's west of where we are. Uh, ben, let's talk a little bit <laughs> about uh, the president of the United States. He was talking the other day in the uh, Rose Garden about whether or not he had called uh, the family members of the four service personnel killed in the country of Niger a few weeks ago. And then he uh, mentioned that uh, President Obama didn't call everybody, and that caused a big media firestorm. Now there's a story that apparently uh, he did call one of the widows of uh, U.S. Army Sergeant LaDavid Johnson uh, a couple of days ago. And uh, Congresswoman from Florida, Frederica Wilson, a Democrat, was infuriated that the president was so insensitive because reportedly the president said the soldier, you know, your husband knew what he signed up for, but I guess it still hurts. What's your observation about what's going on with this? Because suddenly a, a grieving, a phone call from the commander in chief to a grieving family looks like it has been politicized. Well, I mean, here's the, the big problem, is that the, the only account of the phone call that we have so far is actually from Frederica Wilson, and, mm -hmm. and this Democratic congressperson was calling for Trump's impeachment back in May. So the media immediately picked up on her accounts of the conversation. She was apparently in the car and heard the conversation on speakerphone, but we haven't heard anything from the widow of the service member. We haven't heard President Trump's version. We haven't heard the transcript. We haven't heard tapes. We, we haven't heard anything except for a Democrat who has some political motivations here, particularly in the 48 hours after after Trump suggested that President Obama didn't call all of the families of troops and somehow that was a shortcoming. So it's, it's a little bit convenient that this story pops up now. Right. That, that's not to say that he didn't say these things, but I would like to see some evidence before the media immediately jumps to the conclusion that fulfills all of the things they wanted to fulfill. Yeah, let's book a nine-person panel and debate what a bad person the president is. This woman makes Maxine Waters seem like a supporter of Donald Trump. Some of the headlines in the past, Miami correspondent to Donald Trump, please do not, uh, car, Congresswoman to Donald Trump, Stop tweeting. Uh, she well, calls for his impeachment. She also says he is desperate for attention and needs psychological help. This was leading up to the fact that she witnessed on speakerphone the portion of a conversation re regarding the family of a slain soldier. I believe she's got an axe to grind. Maybe she's 100% right. But the background makes you at least be skeptical if you're questioning, all right? Yeah, well, I mean, if, if you're going to be in a he said, she said situation, then you have to wonder about the credibility of the various characters. And this is why I'm saying anyone of fair mind should at this point be saying, OK, let's see some actual evidence mm -hmm. of the conversation, tech, a, a transcript, tape. Uh, how, about to, how about the widow herself testifying as to what exactly happened in this conversation? Because even in Wilson's recounting of the conversation, right. there's some ellipses that do some pretty heavy lifting. She sure. says basically that, that Trump said, uh, you know, he, he knew what he signed up for, but I guess it still feels bad. But there's an ellipses between I knew what he signed, he knew what he signed up for, but I guess it right. still feels bad. Hey. The, the, the ellipses there could be something exactly. like, as you said, right? right. It, it, right. Know, the ellipses could be something like a response directly to the widows and something the widows said. So we just don't know. Ben, we put up the picture of this guy. He's very young. He leaves behind a wife. I don't know if he has kids. He probably leaves behind parents. Here's his picture. Look how young he is. Look how handsome he is. He died for our country. And we're talking about this? Can we not talk about the service and the sacrifice that this man made? Well, again, I think that, you know, if, if the conversation went exactly as Wilson said, that would be somewhat troubling because I don't think right. the president should really be saying that sort of thing. But I don't think that we have the evidence to suggest that. And, and obviously, I think everyone is, is devastated about the loss uh, of Sergeant Johnson. The, the sure. idea that, that President Trump is sitting in the White House and he really doesn't care what happened to, to Sergeant Johnson, that seems to me a very convenient political narrative, as I say, arising 48 hours after Trump seemingly suggested something like that about President Obama. Yeah, we don't know Bush. the conversation, but do you really think the president would call up the widow and say, and, right. and preach that narrative instead of saying, "I'm sorry." Well, the, the th and to your earlier point, where you know you haven't, we haven't heard from the family per se, but we did hear from the president earlier, and he said he, uh, the tweet was, "Democratic congressman totally fabricated what I said to the wife of a soldier who died in action," and I have proof. So the big question is, will he reveal, and then he writes sad, will he reveal that proof? Will we hear from the family? These are normal conversations uh, between a commander-in-chief and a grieving family we never, ever hear about until today. 
All right, let's change gears and talk about Hillary Clinton, who, by the way, is in South Korea saying the president is uh, causing war with North Korea. Totally irresponsible. She also made clear she doesn't want to run against the president again, but she'll continue to harass him and continue to, to criticize him. And now we find out the Clinton Foundation has its link with the Russians. They're revealed to have routed millions of dollars to Hillary Clinton's, uh, while well, she was Secretary of State to the Clinton Foundation. Foundation. And next thing you know, she ends up, uh, Russia ends up with a lot of our uranium. Any coincidence there? Well, I mean, Peter Schweitzer detailed this during the campaign, and it was a major scandal. It was something that President Trump brought up on the campaign trail. But what we're finding out now is that the Obama Department of Justice knew full well that there was attempted corruption by the Russian government in these specific deals, and they did nothing about it. So you do have to wonder, why isn't Eric Holder being called before Congress right now? Why isn't he being called on by the new DOJ to, to answer some questions about why they didn't do anything, why they didn't even apparently let the State Department know, if that's what happened? Uh, it, the, all of this is, is deeply suspicious. We already know that the Department of Justice under Loretta Lynch was making moves on behalf of Hillary Clinton. Was the Department of Justice on behalf of Hillary Clinton making moves under Eric Holder as well that would have protected some sort of cash pipeline between the Russians and the Clinton Foundation? Again, a lot of the documents that have been uncovered by the Hill are, are pretty disturbing from what right. the Hill reports. Uh, and the idea that the, the Obama administration was willing to greenlight this sort of activity, knowing full well that the Russians were attempting to infiltrate uh, the supply of nuclear materials is really, really disturbing stuff. Absolutely. And the more uh, they dig into the Russia thing, the more embarrassing it could be for the Obama administration. Ben, thank you very much for joining us Thanks, today ben. from Knoxville, Tennessee. Thanks so much. You bet. The classified information suggests the final conclusion of the Hillary Clinton email scandal was prepared before the investigation had concluded. Former FBI Director James Comey had his final statement ready into Clinton's use of a private server while she was Secretary of State two months before the probe ended in July 2016. Let's get into this further with Samira Khan, who joins us live from Washington, D.C. Hi, Samira. Yeah, so that announcement by the FBI then was that charges against Clinton were not recommended. So I suppose the question now is how could the then FBI director have had all the information at hand to make such a call if the investigation wasn't even over? Well, according to newly released documents, FBI Director James Comey began drafting his statement regarding the Clinton email investigation months before his official announcement. Uh, now, this is all an interesting twist to the infamous Clinton scandal where she was accused of using a private email server. Let's take a look. There is no classified materials. Our investigation found that there was classified information sent. So it was not true. And now the release is titled Drafts of Director Comey's July 5th, 2016 statement regarding email server investigation, uh, which is in reference to the press conference in which Comey announced that the Bureau would not recommend any charges. Uh, the five-page document has a list of almost 50 deleted pages and a uh, redacted email thread titled uh, Mid-Year Exam. Now, the email is marked unclassified, but the only available content is a senior official's May 16th follow-up on a redacted email from Comey dated May 2nd. And in the email, the uh, FBI official says, please send me any comments on the statement so we may roll into a master doc for discussion with the director at a future date. Thanks, Jim. Uh, but it's worth mentioning that back in August, two senators no sent a letter to the new FBI director the saying that they had learned Comey had drafted the statement in advance. Uh, shortly after that, President Trump accused Comey of exonerating Clinton long before the investigation was over in one of his tweets. With all, be with all that uh, being said, let's take a moment to review the timeline of the in entire investigation. Uh, now, the investigation was confirmed in August of 2015. Clinton was questioned on July 2nd, 2016. 
uh, on July 5th, 2016, Comey announced that the Bureau would not recommend charges. And a day later, on July 6th, 2016, the FBI ruled that no charges would be pressed. And in May of 2016, two months before the announcement, Comey prepared his statement. Uh, but in short, it seems that this mystery is all coming together. But one question remains. How was Comey able to dr draft his statement well before the investigation had concluded? Now, that's still unclear, but I hope we'll all find some answers very, very soon. Bringing us the latest from Washington, D.C., Samira Khan.